Hello everybody, Mike Tenney here at the Tenney School. We're here for Tenney Vlog 13. Today we are going to be talking about self-regulated learning and we have a special guest joining us today, Dr. Janine Antonelli, uh, an old friend of mine and a true expert in this topic. So I know that you will uh, find her talk on this helpful. And for those of you not familiar with uh, the Tenney Vlog, uh, the Vlog is a series of videos that we've put together on topics of interest to parents and educators. And we hope that by viewing these videos, uh, you will help your students achieve the next level of success academically. Uh, and if you like this video, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel or leave a comment down below if you have some additional information or things that you'd like to share with us, please do so. Uh, and without further ado, we will get to my interview with Dr. Antonelli. All right, well, welcome back everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're here for vlog number 13, which is going to be on self-regulated learning. And we have a true expert here to talk to us about this topic, uh, Dr. Janine Antonelli. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, I'm sure. glad to be here. So uh, before we dive into this, uh, let me just say well, one thing. Uh, so actually our connection goes way back. You and I have known each other since 1997 yes. when your husband and I were in training together. So we go way back, but we were in a different state and in a different industry altogether. So it's interesting that we both wind up in Houston and education. Um, and before we dive in, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about your background and how you got here. Sure, absolutely. I've been teaching at the University of Houston in the Psychological okay. Health and Learning Sciences Department since 2012. Um, they say that I bookend the students, if you will. I teach uh, the Learning to Learn or the Self-Regulated Learning Development class um, for our incoming students, and then I coordinate the interns um, who are about to leave the Human Development and Family Studies program and go into the workforce. Okay. Great, and you were telling me that your um, so your doctoral thesis was tied in with self self regulated learning. Yes, so, so I, I'm I'm steeped in this. You right? are really so an expert. <laughs> self regulated learning in um, special populations. My doctorate is actually in professional leadership and okay. and self regulation. Okay, well I um, and I would say I wasn't aware of the term self regulation until you mm -hmm. sent me this topic, okay. um, but it's that's really amazing. I think it's a great framework for kind of understanding uh, the things that we. We need to do to help our kids be successful in life and I think you know as our school is 6th through 12th grade we're, we're particularly interested in launching them out into college and, and I can see how having these self-regulation skills are really going to be the ones that are going to help them when they're truly on their own in college. Absolutely and it's it's not a new idea it's um, it actually traces far back but mm -hmm. it has had a resurgence because of the lack of it in high schoolers going into college and college going into the workforce and that, so that's why it's a highly relevant topic. Okay. okay. All right, so let's just start off by, if you could, give us an uh, uh, overview of what self-regulated learning is. Okay, self-regulated self learning, first of all, slowing down because it's tough to say if you try to say it too yes. fast. But self-regulation, in a nutshell, is, uh, is just what it sounds like. It's self, it's a person managing or regulating four aspects of themselves, their thoughts, their actions, um, their their emotions um, or feelings, including motivation, and um, and their environment toward mm -hmm. a particular goal. So self-regulated learning um, is related to that goal of academic performance. Self-regulation in the workplace, where our students are moving toward, that's ultimately where we want them to move, right. um, is um, is then focused on um, on performance in the workplace. And again, why this is important. Is, uh, is that uh, we're finding that students are lacking the soft skills. There's a buzz phrase out there that they're getting hired for their hard skills and fired for their soft skills, and that would be what self-regulation helps. Okay, Abs outstanding. Um, so let's talk about it in practice. So how would you use self-regulated learning in practice? Yeah, so it's taking those four areas and um, applying a process that's probably familiar to all of us. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end to everything. Mm -hmm. And there's a planning phase. You get ready to do something, then you do it, and then you reflect on whether or not it was successful. And that's, um, that's, that's really the self-regulated process. Okay. Now, some of us get stuck in planning okay. and don't make the leap to action. Some of us um, get all, we jump to action and don't plan enough. Okay. And some of us skip planning and action and we ruminate about the last thing that we did. And any one of those can get a student stuck. Okay. And we probably identify ourselves in any one of those. 
And then the goal of self-regulation is to find a balance between those or an integration of those three phases of planning, doing, and then reflecting so that you can be effective in achieving a particular goal, whether okay. it's changing the way you think, changing the way you feel about something, changing your actions, or changing your environment to be okay. successful. So, and uh, let's let's talk about, uh, so it, it's maybe overplayed this helicopter parenting term, sure. but it is real. Yes. Um, we definitely see parents uh, that are trying to do too much for their student. Mm -hmm. and, and I know even with my own kids, it's very tempting because you think if I could just get this done right, then everything else will help, mm -hmm. uh, will flow after that. Um, but uh, so the, par the helicopter parent is intervening in this process. Correct. That would be parent regulating the child still instead of the student self-regulating. Okay. And we want to move in the direction of the student owning their thoughts, their feelings, their actions, and their environment. Okay. Um, so I, I think the, uh, the, the helicopter parenting is counter to this self-regulated, self and so we need to try to back away and, and encourage our kids to take ownership and run through the cycle on their own. Um, so what are some practices on how you can do that, how you can see your kid get into that uh, process. Sure. There, there are several ways, and my, my first advice would be to start small. Okay. If you tend to jump in and you are the person regulating your student, then um, and you all of a sudden have an awareness of this and I'm going to change this, I'm going to completely step back. That's mm -hmm. not a good solution either. Okay. This, uh, this is That would be disruptive. Instead, find a tiny point of insertion, something where you catch yourself all of a sudden, oh, wow, I'm aware that I... Um, am constantly asking him about what his homework is mm -hmm. or always writing him on his test scores. Um, maybe instead of taking that stance and then being punitive, oftentimes if they don't meet our standards, right. is to take the stance of curiosity or asking powerful questions so the student can start to lead um, in their own life. Okay. So we had talked a little bit before about um, a, a bad test grade, uh -huh. like why that would be. Instead of coming down hard on them, I can't believe you got this grade, what happened, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. that kind of questioning. You can ask that same question, what happened, um, in a gentler, more curious way that helps the student step through what did happen. Sure. How did I end up with this outcome? Was I expecting it? Was I expecting something different? Um, in college, oftentimes what we find is students will believe that they had studied for a test and were ready. They read um, they read the whole textbook and I knew everything but what we found is for example one aspect of self-regulating is to self-test they didn't quiz themselves they felt that just by reading the textbook and maybe your students are, might do the same thing um, that familiarity they felt that they knew the information but one strategy would be self-testing instead of just reading so there's sure. one example of students parents could lead their student in that direction is oh well if you you know just read maybe we might try quizzing ourselves mm -hmm. instead <laughs> okay okay so um, thinking a little bit more about uh, parents helping or not helping with the process and teachers helping or not helping with the process mm -hmm. so let's talk about negative consequences and how those can and may or may not help the student develop a self-regulated learning environment so the thing about consequences, whether they are positive or negative, um, for students in the framework of self-regulation, is whether um, the consequences are coming from the natural, from just following naturally, right. or coming from outside. So regardless of whether there are rewards or ne negative consequences, if they're coming from the parent or the educator, that is still not self-regulation okay. for the student. So the student can um, decide. For themselves sometimes what the reward would be and we do find that rewards positive feedback is mm -hmm. better than negative okay. for getting the results that you want okay um, but sometimes natural consequences are negative so it isn't necessarily that negative consequences are bad sometimes it's the source of that consequence okay so I hear what you're saying yeah and punitive or punishing from parents takes the responsibility off of the student and it actually um, 
creates like avoidance behaviors. Okay. So it, it actually sometimes induces deception. Okay. And kind of uh, behaviors that we don't want to um, to build in the student. And it also help. It also develops this vision in students that it's somebody, it's somebody else, not me, mm -hmm. who's impacting my life. Right. And the same is true uh, on the positive side. So, uh, and I think I've, I've listened to some podcasts that talked about you need to stop telling your kids that they're smart. Yes. Um, so praising your kids for the wrong thing, and the reason that that's the wrong thing is because they, they can't do anything about their IQ. They're born with that. So by praising them for something they can't control, you're not helping your child. Right. And Carol Dweck calls that a fixed mindset. Okay. So you're focusing on things that are fixed and in the student's mind can't be changed. Okay. And it's if that's strongly tied over time to their identity, then if you criticize or praise that, then they take that on as being um, a reflection of them. Sure. Whereas if you take it a step out and the flip side is growth mindset and you focus on something like effort or mm -hmm. attitude or behavior things that they can a constructive control. behavior something that they can have influence yeah. on that's very empowering for students they can see that this is something I can fix maybe I uh, I did it well and I can see why I did it well so I'll continue to do that okay. or maybe I didn't do as well as I wanted to um, and I can figure out I can problem-solve and and change that and do better next time. Okay. And just if I, let me see if I understand this too. This is kind of complicated. So ultimately we want our child to do well without external positive praises or consequences. Correct. But as part of being a parent, you need to set these up to try to coach them to go in that direction, right? So it's not Absolutely. like, you, ultimately you don't want to have to use those for your child to be self-regulated, right? Right. But f there has to be a strategy to how you use them to get them to that point. Yes, okay. absolutely. And and it's just like you said, it's a strategy. And there are many of them out there and um, there are experts who can help lead you that way. Um, there are um, uh, community groups and parents often talking with each other about what works and doesn't work is very helpful. But um, ultimately, you want to help raise the child's awareness about natural consequences. Okay. This is what happens, this is what will happen, positive or negative, if you do this thing. And parents can set up consequences, mm -hmm. and if you do that, you definitely want to make the two choices that, are, that you give to your child be acceptable to you. Okay. So if you choose this, so there's, there's a approach out there that if you choose X, then you choose Y. Mm -hmm. It's not if you choose X, then I'm going to do Y to you. Mm -hmm. You help the child to take ownership of both the action and the consequence the or the reaction to that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Does that answer your yes, question? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Um, so, and before we went on the air, we talked a little bit about uh, you can use something like the SMART um, acronym to help. Um, you talked about uh, journaling is another way. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think specifically journaling is helping with that awareness piece. Absolutely. So it's um, it's tempting to, to scoot right past the self-awareness part. Okay. But we kind of tend to have a blind spot about ourselves. Um, you know, there's what we know about ourselves and don't know about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there is what others know about us and what they don't know. And the intersection of what we don't know about ourselves and what others know about us mm -hmm. is this blind spot and we want to shrink that down and there are different ways to do that and journaling can help okay. it can reveal patterns and kids can do this mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be more than um, a sentence or in, it doesn't always have to be a complete sentence you can jot notes to yourself about any behavior or thought or emotion that you want to change okay. just kind of track it over time and you can see a pattern and that can help um, point us to different strategies that'll work. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that's it for today. I hope you guys found that a helpful topic. Uh, for me, this framework is just an outstanding way to think about how we need to get our students ready to be off on their own in college and in life. And I'm sure that I personally could take away a few lessons learned from this video. So special thanks to Dr. Antonelli for coming out and doing this with, with us. And otherwise, we will see you next time.